you tell us a little bit about the stages of maturity in the female fish? We've been doing that um, probably since the early 90s we've been looking at that. It's, mm -hmm. it's an important aspect of their biology because the, their growth rates are very different. Males and females grow very different. So um, we'll start with the simplest ones, the males. There's basically two stages. They're either an M1 or an M2. <clears throat> There's also an MV, which are virgin males, but those are smaller than 36, so we never see those. The M1s, males um, spawn every other year. So when they're not spawning, they're an M1. They are going to spawn, they're an M2. So an M1 is just a fish with mostly fat and hardly any sperm. And then the M2 is all sperm. All of that fat has been converted to, to sperm. And females, it's more complicated. There's um, FVs, which we see very rarely. Those are very small females. <laughs> and then mostly what we see are F1s and F2s. Um, and uh, there's F1, 2, 3, 4. That's what we see during the winter. And F1s um, are females that have spawned, or either have part in their first cycle of spawn or have spawned before, and they go through a five-year cycle, so they spawn every five years. So they'll be in an F1 stage for a couple of years, and those are just microscopic eggs. When you cut them open, you can see it looks like sort of <coughs> brain tissue. There's like microscopic eggs in there, so those are, that's an F1. They're in that stage for a couple of years. And then when they start to you know, get closer to spawning, they become F2s. So the eggs get larger, all that fat has been covered with the yolk. And the F2s are, the, the eggs are visible, they're yellow. And then, now that fish would be one that would spawn uh, a year from now. And so, uh, we'll see some of those, those are typically um, heavier because of there's, there's more egg tissue. And occasionally we'll see an F4. And that's a fish that would have spawned this following spring, so its eggs are orange and black. There's still um, a lot of connective tissue, um, so those F4s in, in April would become F5s, which would be the eggs are loose. You know, they're ovulating. And then uh, the F3s we only would see during the winter. So an F2 fish that we would see now, if we could follow it and catch it in the summer, it would be an F3, and then it would become an F4 by winter, and then an F5 in the spring. And then we sometimes see F6. An F6 is, uh, it looks just like an F1, because it's gone back to the start of the cycle again. But it has um, little blicks, it looks like black pepper sprinkled throughout the ovarian tissue. And those are the uh, ripe eggs that were not spawned. They don't spawn all their eggs, there's some left over. So those eggs get reabsorbed into the tissue to be reused. So, and then, so we can tell in the winter if we see an F6, we know that that fish spawned last year. So keeping track of, of those data give us a lot of information on frequency of spawning and, and you know, length and weight, all the associated indices. Yeah. Can you tell us more about the white sturgeon we saw come through here the other day? Yeah, I, I, you know, I have never seen that before. Okay. Um, we, we saw three or four of them last year. I think, uh, down at once there were like two or three of them that came in. And they were, they were not, they're not albinos. Uh, I'm pretty sure that only mammals can be albinos. Um, so, the, you know, they don't have pink eyes. But there's, there's evidently some, a rare number, a small number of, of fish that are very, very pale. So they, their skin just lacks pigment. Yeah. And they can be from almost white to, you know, medium white to what we normally see, which is pretty dark. Mm -hmm. yeah. and there was one guy that came in, I think it might have been opening day or the second day, and he, it was a nice fish, it was in the 90s, I think, and he said he saw it like it was 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about the season, what you thought of it? This has been one for the records. Um, I've been doing this for 19 years now. And as I think in 04, we had a fish that was 188 pounds. Mm -hmm. That was a huge record. Yeah. And then this year we had a 212 pound fish. We had a 116 pound male, which is, they're both records. We didn't think males could get that big. Uh, we knew yeah, there were 200 pound yeah. females in the system, but you know, all of these years, no one's ever speared one. This was the first time one got speared. So there's that. Um, there's a, the water is really, really clear. The ice is really good, very solid. There's not much snow cover, so guys can move easily. Yeah. And so they're able to follow fish, they're able to move to find fish. And so the numbers coming in are very hot on a daily basis. So everything's good. I mean, everything's optimal in terms of being a spear. There's lots of fish out there to spear. I've heard more people missing fish than I usually hear. And that, and that means that they're seeing them. If they're missing them, they're seeing them. And, and usually you don't see them. They're very hard to spot. That's part of the, of the intrigue of the sport is seeing it. And not only seeing it, but reacting fast enough to be able to throw a spear and also hit it. And also hit it solidly and get it back out of the hole. So it's been a record year in terms of big fish record sized fish in terms of numbers of fish being harvested and also in terms I haven't crunched the numbers but but I'm seeing more you know 70 80 90 pound fish than I've ever seen before. and all of the fish are in really good shape so they've been feeding really well they're very healthy and after this year, how old do you think the surgeon is at? I've heard 100 years in the past. Do you think older than 100? I'm sure they can be older. I don't think anyone... When they get to be that age, it's almost impossible to get an accurate age because we age them with bony structures and they look much like growth rings on a tree. And if you look at a, at a very old tree, those, the, the annuli or the annual, annual rings get laid down every year, but as the growth slows, they get laid down closer and closer together. And that's what's happening with these fish. And so a fish that's 100 years old, it, it could have 50 annuli that are really, really close together. So it's just a guess. Uh, we're going to try to look at, there's um, there's bony tissue in all fishes, there's, they call them ear stones or otoliths, and they're um, organs, basically organs of balance in the brains of fish, and these otoliths are used, if you could surgically remove otoliths without killing the fish, the fish wouldn't know which way was up, and it wouldn't know how fast it was going, like that. Those are the best structures to age. Ron is able to get, will be able to get the Nautilus out of that 212 pound fish. Whether we can get an accurate age, it'll be more accurate than we've ever seen um, in terms of looking at Nautilus for aging. This would be the oldest fish we've ever looked at, so. Um, but looking, you know, looking at the relationship the between size and age, we've got a lot of data to show us that. Age. <laughs> Judging by the length of the fish, it's around 100 or more okay. years. Do you have any predictions for next year? Do you think we'll break the record again next year? I don't know if we'll break the record next year, but I would almost guarantee in the next five years we will. Because what we're seeing now are fish that have lived long enough mm -hmm. to get to be as big as they are, and they're just coming into the fishery. And that has never happened in anybody's lifetime. It'll just get better. What do you got? A spear and then like a rope attached to the spear?